Aeon the Last Vampire. The most apocalyptic vampire movie ever made. <sighs> now that long exaggerated sigh should tell you exactly what I thought of this film. <laughs> Now, the bulk of it, let's say about 70% of it, is primarily a discussion taking place between the last vampire here and, um, where is it? Let's see, uh, that's your face here, is there anything else in here that could be misleading? Sometimes these covers are misleading. Um, no, actually every single scan here is in the film, that's great. This entire cover is accurate, okay? So, well, aside from this, this isn't in the film. This bottom half is, though. Maybe this is just to show you in artwork form what's happening above ground. Because this entire film takes place in a single warehouse below ground. And there's only two actors, two people are in this film. The vampire and uh, this lady here. Now, Aeon, I believe that's his name, because this is Aeon, the last vampire on Earth. I believe he... he it is the last vampire, as he says. And, um, the entire film is essentially a philosophical discussion where Aeon is giving the human, is, is educating our human character, the human perspective, on the true history of the world. He claims he's been on this planet since the dawn of the planet and before mankind. And he spends the most of the bulk of the film insulting humans and their propensity to be stupid. He insults humans and their propensity to make up things and formulate kingdoms that just fall apart and then they just abandon them all over the place. They dot the countryside with signs of massive civilizations instead of just building and remaining and keeping the old because it worked and... He just insults everybody, uh, and very quickly you understand that what he says has very little in the way of substance, other than saying, humans are bad, my kind were right, that you guys are bad, you guys end up ended up killing most of us all, and then when these people, these aliens, came and destroyed the rest of you, they killed the rest of us off, too, and we could have survived this had you humans not bothered us. That's basically what he's trying to say. And the human character here, I believe her name is Catherine. The human character here says that um, her she she's the faith argument here. This is a, the bulk of this film is a discussion between two characters. The faith argument coming from the human character and the um, the uh, whatever argument Aeon is propon proponenting. And while I could agree on many levels that humanity has been a detriment as well as a boon to this planet, uh, and probably more detriment at times. <laughs> Uh, certainly so in this film, because you, you, you can make the argument that this entire problem is happening because of human activity. The world is being destroyed because of human activity, as this film is trying to purport, purport to you. So, in many perspectives, he is correct. But he is trying to argue against a religious argument that she is proponenting. She is saying that the vampires are no different from the humans and that everybody has a soul. She's arguing the soul argument. She's arguing the, the, um, the Abrahamic faith argument. Because normally, every time you have a vampire in these types of... I mean, well, this isn't mainstream at all. This is an indie film. But when you have these types of Western-style films, you don't necessarily have the vampire take place in ancient Egypt and the Egyptian pantheons or the Norse pantheons or the Greek pantheons or, or, or in Chinese. There's, there, there are Chinese vampires. There are Chinese vampires. There's all sorts of stuff like that. But yeah, there are vampires across the world, but the most popular one 
from the majority of the mainstream media and the things that a lot of indie films try to take from is the Dracula vampire. And the Dracula vampire archetype, the most popular mainstream type of vampire, is strictly tied to the Abrahamic faith vampire type lore and all that stuff, the crosses, the holy stuff, and all that stuff. So every time you have a religious argument against the vampire, you would use the Abrahamic faith, right? So that's exactly the type of proponent that, that she is pr pr proponenting against Aeon, the, the Aeon character, right? And while this argument remains up in the air, she neither wins or loses in her discussion against Aeon, and Aeon neither wins nor loses in his discussion against her. He has been trapped in this warehouse in some sort of scientific tube-like object for decades and decades and decades, growing weaker and weaker because, you know, he's a vampire he feeds off of blood, obviously. At least in this in this continuity as well, in this type of continuity, he feeds off the blood and all that stuff, so he wants to feed off of her since she's the closest blood source. And humans seem to be in very short supply right now. <laughs> But she wants to ask him some questions. She's not really necessarily keen on giving him her blood, but she wants to know what he is, where he came from, and she gets curious about the stories that he has to tell, right? So Aeon starts telling um, Catherine stories of the ancient world before mankind and all that stuff. He starts issuing out all of his hate speech against humans and all that stuff. And you can start to get the feeling that it's kind of... What's that one thing that that, that, that feels really sci-fi? That one faith that feels really sci-fi? What is it? What is it? Scientology. I think it's Scientology. The Scientology one is that one that proponents a bunch of extraterrestrials and aliens and sci-fi stuff, right? There, that's... I, I know very little about Scientology, clearly. But, I th uh, that's the one that involves the aliens and stuff, right? So, he seems to have that point of view that the aliens came and they, they were the progenitors of the human species and things have been going on for a long, 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 long time. Aliens all over the planet, all this stuff. Aliens came, they made the humans, and then the humans started being terrible. And then they came to them and realized, you guys are terrible, we're gonna destroy you now. So that's what they're doing right now. And then she's like, no, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. And then she's trying to, to in, in, enforce her proponents against aliens, and uh, c c clearly the aliens, the ones destroying the, the planet, but, 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 but she's proponent to the argument of the soul and the, the continuation of life after death, and Aeon is laughing away all of her, um, all of her arguments, saying that the, the, the concept of the soul was created primarily out of the fear of the emptiness of death, and he's explaining historically from his vampire fictional perspective of when humans started to get all ugh, about this stuff I started checking out I started checking out around um, the 30 30 minute mark and I was passively paying attention to the the back and forth, but it was just constant back and forth. I don't remember the specifics these guys are going about, but it's just endless. The last ten minutes was an actual fight between the two. Aeon grows a patient and tries to feed off Catherine, and Catherine fends him off because Aeon's so weak in his current state that she manages to fend him off and runs away, and she flees. She escapes the warehouse. Aeon does not perish, though. He opens um, a discarded suitcase in the corner and finds that there's a patch, a package of blood in it. And then the film cuts to credits, having an indeterminate argument between the two perspectives. Neither one ends up being proven correct. Um, but we do know for a fact from what Catherine says is that there's a lot of explosions happening above ground and everybody is dying. Everybody, there's people getting sick of it and all that stuff. And, um, that proponent is being pushed that by Aeon, that the aliens are the, the cause of all of this. So, 
yeah, this is one of those types of movies. It's a movie with a message. The entire film is a message that's trying to tell you. It's trying to push that philosophical viewpoint this way or this way. Which one's right, which one's wrong. But they don't want to use their cojones to really push one over the other. So they just leave both sides indeterminate at the end of the film. It's safe. It's a very safe way to end your film that you don't discredit one side completely and you don't prove one side completely or vice versa. You leave it up in the air. A lot of films do this. A lot of films are very safe in that regard and that's fine. I like it when you leave it safe because it leaves it up to the viewer's interpretation of the events that transpired and what you would like to take away. Do you want to take it away from Catherine's perspective and view that she's renouncing the vampire, claiming that he's probably just one of the fallen? Which is probably, like, um, in an in, in, in old biblical canon, uh, no, it's not biblical canon, there's the things like the Dead Sea Scrolls, you can look these up anytime you like. There's the Dead Sea Scrolls in the whole war of the heavens, right, where one side had one-third of the army, and the other side had two-thirds of the army, and clearly the bigger side won, and the smaller side fell. And all the fallen started to fall like meteors onto the world below, right? So as that story would say, that some of these people are called fallen. And these fallen have become corrupted images of their former selves. And you could argue that she is trying to enforce that he is probably one of those, and he's denying that he's denying he's one of those and he's purporting that her vision of that story of it that that, that that chain of events is a warped version of that chain of events and that his version is that there that there was no like heavens that fell and all that stuff it was more aliens it was just alien things that happened and then they, they, his kind came to before and all they came before the humans kind and it, it's interesting and if I was interested enough, I would watch this movie again and listen and pay attention to what they have to say. But the film itself just isn't as interesting as the idea they're trying to push across, which is correct. Is this guy one of the fallen in regards to the old biblical canon, right? Is he one of the fallen in that regards, or is he in regards to, like, the whole aliens and stuff like that, is he in regards to that stuff, right? Are the aliens come into attack, and, the, and the, is it like that, or is it the other way? It's up in the air. All that we know for certain is that Catherine gets away, and Aeon remains trapped in the, uh, the, uh, the warehouse. Judging from the, the cover art here, you get the feeling that Aeon is supposed to be the main character of the story, and he's supposed to maybe go against these a aliens or something like that. At least that's what I expected. Then you read the back here. Now, you could have paused this at any time to read this, but I'll go ahead and read it for you in case the quality of this, fi this video is so terrible. And it probably is. Aeon, the last vampire on Earth. Fleeing a cataclysm of unimaginable origin, Catherine Murnau finds herself trapped in a nightmare while holed up in a crumbling warehouse where a crypto-classified human predator has been accidentally set free. Catherine soon realizes that she is, in fact, not alone, coming face to face with the last vampire who is starving from being imprisoned in a weakened state for decades. Catherine begins to fear that she may have stumbled into her own tomb, but reaches within herself to engage with the creature, learning more about human history than the world outside would dare to face. A truth so alarming and illusion-shattering that it could only be told by the last vampire on Earth. And that's essentially the story. And it's not misleading. That, 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 that whole synopsis in the back cover is not misleading at all. That's essentially what happens in the film. That is exactly essentially what happens in the film. Aeon becomes a storyteller who's very grumpy and disgruntled about his state of affairs and he wants to 
get out of the warehouse. He wants to feed on Catherine and becomes big and strong again and leave the warehouse and do whatever. And Catherine wants to escape the warehouse and she wants to know what's actually going on. She wants to know what Aeon is because he, she's never encountered somebody like him before. And this is all new to her. So this new information she's trying to battle her cognitive dissonance over and trying to establish this new information with what she knows and what she grew up with her concept of the soul or all of that stuff she's trying to battle this new information with that old information right and there's a whatever going on here if you're interested in that type of philosophical discussions and all that stuff and you really want to know what these guys are saying to each other that would probably be the only reason I would suggest you watch this film. Because, other than that discussion, there's really nothing else in here. There's nothing else that happens in this film. Literally, Catherine encounters Aeon, Aeon talks to Catherine, Catherine talks back, they give rebuttals, they get angry, they walk away from each other for a little bit, they have a little fight sometimes, and then they talk again, and then they have a big fight at the end, and then they just walk away from each other, and then they end credits hit. That is the movie. The only reason to watch it is for the discussion that they have. So if you're interested, give it a shot. If you're not, then don't. But be imaginative, everybody.